Hey guys, it is uh, Tuesday, November 19th. Bitcoin hit 94K, now it's trading at 92K. Uh, and this episode is entitled My Five Predictions for uh, the Upcoming Cycle. And uh, before I get into this, if you guys um, are watching this on YouTube, I really want you to hit the subscribe button. Uh, that gives me more subscribers. You get notified when I make a new video. I try to make YouTube videos and as well as my spaces that I like to host with uh, Wayne Vaughn and Ben Sigman uh, and others, uh, as well as uh, our Bitcoin First events. We've done one. We've done preparing another one um but this this um if you're on youtube and watching this hit the subscribe button and uh that'll get me more great guests and uh, uh we've had some we've had some really excellent ones so far um caitlin long was amazing uh you know we we've had great topics great guests um we got some amazing guests planned so hit subscribe and with that in mind I'm going to knock off my top five predictions for the upcoming cycle. So the first prediction, and I know a lot of people are upset about it, is it really is that the power law is not going to break. Now, why am I so completely convinced about that? You know, I think, you know, it's very simple. Um, first of all, if you look at the power law just in and of itself, you you can easily think um, that you know it's wobbly and uh, you know it, it it everything is going to change with the ETFs or sovereign adoption or Bitcoin strategic reserve. But I don't think so. I think I think it is not uh, likely to change. And uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a background on that. And I really think this uh, this thing that I posted a while ago, this one here. Okay, let's show it. Um, I go to my um, to my Twitter and this is the uh, this is here the app four year average of the log price. Okay, so what did I do to get this? I took the Bitcoin price, uh, I converted it into a log uh, price, and then I averaged that log over the last four years. And you can see and so this is the log of time here, and this is the log of Bitcoin price. Now, if you go to five, that's $100,000 uh, of Bitcoin, 10 to the power of five. Six is uh, a million. And, you know, we have seen that this, this smoothed out average log BTC price is a straight line. And... You know, the next four years, it's going to depend, the first part's going to depend on, you know, these prices here because you're going to be averaging some of these. But where it's going to end up is going to be completely independent of any of this data. So if we go to um, 10 to the power 1.3, and that number is uh, 19.9, so let's call it 20 years that is 2029. We we see that we're going to get you know uh, about uh, it's about 500k. All right, a little bit a little bit under 500k. Uh, it it really doesn't seem like this law this path is going to do anything then continue. So that's my first real post um, is that um, you know the uh, uh, the power law is probably not going to change, right? That's the first thing I was going to say. The second thing I have to say is um, about uh, the... Um, hold on a second. The second thing I will say is that MSTR is going to stop. They're really going to tap out in the next four years at about 500,000 Bitcoin. They're not going to get to a million Bitcoin. Um, and I think this is, this, is, this is important. I think you know, MSTR has talked about deploying $42 billion. Uh, they're going to deploy that $42 billion over 2025, and they're going to continue. But let's just say they, they deploy $100 billion. They're not going to be able to buy 300,000 Bitcoin with that, um, with that 
hundred billion, right? They just won't be able to do that. Um, it, it, unfortunately, the math does not look really great for MSTR. They already have a valuation uh, that is in excess of the current market valuation of the Satoshi stack, so that which is a million Bitcoin. They're they're currently valued as if they had one point two. Uh, million Bitcoin in their treasury. They don't. They have 350,000 Bitcoin. So I don't think they're going to be able to buy the next 300,000 Bitcoin for uh, 100 billion. Uh, I don't. Um, and I think that uh, uh, I think in general, the, their, their strategy of tapping the convertible debt market you're, you're, you're hitting the limits of that market. That is a $300 billion a year market. There are, you know, they, they can only do so much in that market. They can't take $200 billion out of that $300 billion market. There's, there's simply not going to be enough buyers of this. So as I believe that they are going to slow down, I believe the multiple is going to start contra contracting because I think it's going to be very clear that they're not going to be able to get anywhere close to the million Bitcoin that uh, the their multiple would um, would really require them to get, and so uh, that's my prediction for MSTR. The third prediction is I think there's going to be a bear market of something like fifty percent sometime in the next three years. Now, you know, for those of us who've been around and who've been through some of these cycles, fifty percent is is you know is nothing, right? We've seen seventy five, eighty percent bear markets. I think this one will be less. I think it'll be probably something more like 50%. Um, but I do think we're going to drop 50% from whatever high we make in the next three years. Uh, I also don't think this is going to happen in 2026. Uh, uh, I think it, it could happen in 2027, 2028. I sort of believe that there's going to be some form of a super cycle. I don't think that this is the next cycle is going to be dictated by a mining having um related uh timeline uh, and i think the the net of this is the power law is going to be respected and if if and when we get this bear market i do believe that mstr will will crash a lot more than bitcoin so i do believe mstr is going to go down much more than 50 percent uh and i think it's going to revert to a multiple of one or even lower uh, i think it could trade at a discount to fair market value now, some of the MSTR fanboys are going to say, well, at that point, they can buy back MSTR. Uh, they, can, they can do all these things. But, you know, we'll see when that happens. Uh, I just would like to point out that MSTR was at a multiple of one 11 months ago or 10 months ago even. Uh, things, things can go back down. And in general, closed-end funds can trade and do trade typically at um, below one multiple. And just this is one example of that. Look at Bitwise, um, BITW. Uh, I own that uh, fund. I bought it at a, about a negative 25% discount. Now it's at a 15% discount. Um, and that fund owns 75% of that fund is in Bitcoin, 10% or 15% is in Ethereum. And then they have a, a little bit of Solana and a few other coins. But you know, it, it nevertheless remains at a discount. And, uh, you know, you can say they don't have an operating company, but I would argue that neither does MSTR. So uh, I think I think MSTR is overvalued, and I do think that in the next bear market, whenever that comes, it will, it will contract down substantially. Uh, my fourth prediction is that the real engines of growth are going to be IBIT and FBTC. So I think that, you know, the, the process of having institutional investors uh, and mainly uh, advisors managed accounts are going to be the next big block of buyers. Now, if you look at the overall, um, the overall kind of uh, way wealth is, 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 is set up, you have about one third is sort of self-directed, you know, people just going to their brokerage accounts and, and making their own investment decisions. One third of the wealth is in managed accounts where people are managing these investment decisions for other people. Um, and I've mentioned 
that my mother has a managed account at uh, Morgan Stanley, for example. And, uh, you know, a lot of this managed money, very, almost none of it has really hit the market yet. And the third part is institutional uh, pension funds, retirement accounts and stuff. So, you know, I just don't think we've seen anything in terms of real institutional money coming into this asset class at this point. And I think that's really the place you're going to see most of the the funds come in over the next three years. And I do expect we're going to see literally uh, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars coming in over the next five years, uh, or the next three three years even, um, maybe a trillion dollars come into this this asset. So I'm extremely bullish for Bitcoin, but I definitely think, and I go back to my original premise that I made when I first started talking on Twitter, which I think that the ETFs are really the big deal, um, not not sovereign wealth funds, uh, not corporate treasuries, and not um, closed-end funds like MSTR. So that's my thesis for that. And now my fifth prediction, my fifth prediction is that lending is going to become a significant business, right? So a lot of people, a lot of Bitcoiners are now sitting on pretty big gains in Bitcoin, and they would like to tap some of those gains without selling their Bitcoin, without selling their ETFs. And I think that is coming. I think it's coming in a lot of different forms. I think it's coming in terms of ETFs being able to, uh, you know, uh, offer really good margin um, to, to lend people. Uh, it's, you know, it, we're seeing this product sort of evolve in many different ways, both in the KYC institutional, you know, ETF version of this, and as well as we will see it in sort of more decentralized, non-KYC, Aave type um, products. But I definitely think it's it's coming, and I think that's going to be another big big thing that's going to push for the market to extend, right? Because I think that a lot of people, you know, who have gains will not sell to lock in those gains. Instead, I think they will just borrow against their gains. So I think that's that's going to be part of the big business. So those are my five things. I'm just going to recap them once more. Um, if you're not there, the First one, the power law won't break. Number two, uh, MSTR, probably going to stop at around 500,000 Bitcoin. Number three, there will be a bear market. And in that bear market, that bear market of 50% or more, and that bear market will cause the MSTR multiple to contract down to one. Number four is that the real growth engines of this market are going to be IBIT and FBTC with managed accounts being the main growth area. And number five, I think lending is going to become a serious business. Thank you very much. Again, if you haven't um, subscribed to me, hit uh, subscribe and please check out our Bitcoin spaces every day at 8 a.m. every weekday at 8 a.m. to 10 uh, a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and we'll catch you on uh, online or on video. And I hope you're having a great day. Thanks.